Hi friends, welcome back. This is Solomon Jagwe. Uh, if you're new to my channel, I kindly ask that you spare a minute to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're alerted when I post a new video. And to everybody else that has subscribed, I thank you so much for your support. So today we're going to be talking about uh, Daz Studio. I'm back, when, I'm back with a, another quick insight and mini tutorial. And so most, uh, most of the videos I've been doing have, been, have had to do with character animation. But in Daz Studio, there is a whole library of uh, animals, all kinds of them, you know, and there, some of them are cartoony animals, some of them are realistic, some of them are science fiction. So I needed, I wanted to do like a, a tutorial on how to animate animals in Daz Studio without using uh, motion capture, okay? So I'm gonna be using this character here. He's a, uh, this elephant character by 3D Universe and I want to be able to show how you can use the Puppeteer plugin, this Puppeteer plugin, and you find that under the tabs, like window, tab, pens, and then look for Puppeteer. It's going to be right here, okay? And the idea, the way the Puppeteer works is that it takes the, like, orientation, translation of uh, the body parts of an animal, and then you're able to plug in in here to animate that character okay and let me play back this animation real quick so you can see the results go ahead and play so as you can tell i mean the trunk is swaying and the the there's some like slight flapping over the ears the body is moving a little bit so all this was made possible using puppeteer and just combining a bunch of uh, you know attributes of the body of the animal, and so that this technique applies to the animals that you see on the studio in here. As long as it it has a skeleton, it can be, it can move. You'll be able to animate it using the puppeteer. And what is really cool is it that the animation data that you apply to one character so if you want a multiple multiple versions of these characters in the scene is that you can copy this animation and copy it to the another model of a similar structure so that you can reuse the animation okay so here's a quick test let me uh, stop this animation and the cute little <laughs> cartoony <laughs> elephant all right let's go press stop down here and I'm going to load another model. Let's be, go back to the very beginning. Make sure nothing else is selected because it will, if you have a character select, selected, it will swap out that character. So here's the model. I uh, will go to figures. I'm not using the smart content and to isolate to this elephant. So double click on the big elephant here. So there he is. And we'll move, him, move him off to the side so we can see how the animation is going to work. Okay, and what's cool is that this character, just like you see on the website, it comes in two versions. One is a grown-up, like mama elephant, and then there's also a baby elephant. So we want to see if the animation can actually go onto the little baby elephant that the, ground, the mama has. So we have this selected. So what we do is make sure you're on the first frame on the timeline, and then go ahead and increase, rather, sorry, adjust this slider to convert the little elephant into a baby okay and then we can move him a little bit forward so we can see him a little bit better so we zoom in so let's see if we can copy the animation from the mama bear <laughs> mama bear no not mama bear mama elephant to the baby elephant to see if the animation is actually carried through and the way you do that is uh, over here on animate light depending on which one you're using so we'll copy this animation, right click, copy, and this is the big baby elephant here. And actually we can give it an, a, a name, call it baby, baby elephant, okay. And you can see it's selected here. And so we're gonna copy, we've, we'll select the, uh, the elephant the one that we want to work with which is this one and we're going to copy copy that animation 
and we're going to select this one, which is the baby elephant, and we're going to paste. Okay, and make sure it's, uh, we drag it to the beginning, and let's see if the animation actually worked. <laughs> the moment of truth. Play back, go back to the timeline, and let's play. Boom. <laughs> So the animation has been ported over to the little elephant, as you can see. That's the cool, the neat thing, you know. That that's really really cool, is that uh, this can have like a uh, five babies, for example, and the animation is uh, copied onto that. So that was a quick tutorial, on or that is a demonstration on how this works. So if you wanted to start from scratch, okay, you what you do is you load the animal let's bring in another one over here let's move it to the side and then you create a layer so this is the layer that has been created but you can go click over here and add a layer and you can also rename the layer so we can rename layer one to for example body and we can add another layer we call it uh, trunk and maybe let me do one more layer so you get a, an idea of what uh, the process is and I'll call it uh, eyes okay because that's how I was able to animate the eyes and so first we're gonna start with I'm not gonna go through every single thing but I'm just giving you an idea of how this uh, the puppeteer works and this is if you're new to da studio and you're trying to you don't have a motion capture suit or you don't have access to mock-up data for animals this is how you animate by hand and this makes it easier this uh, puppeteer tool makes it easier make sure your character is selected here okay so we're not animating the big elephant we're animating this one and it's it helps actually give it a name animate elephant okay so make sure it's selected all right and go to the pausing part here pausing that's where you have the different transformations of the different body parts so when you select a head for example you see that it can bend you see up and down like that okay and you can also go side to side and it can also twist okay so that's a, a good one to start with so start with the default pause and click one time here so that's the default pause then go to bend take it to the left i'm um, rather go up and put it up at the top go to the extreme end put it down and then we can click on this one to reset and then go to from side to side go this way put another key right there like a, it's called a pause here and then go to extreme right add another one so you get the idea is that we're going to use the uh, preview to see how it's working all right go back to the default one okay and we also need to do twist now we happen to put this on the eyes, but maybe what we need to do is change this. Should you make a mistake, you just have to rename this and we'll call this the head. Okay. And then uh, for the eyes, okay, this is a good exercise in, let's just call it, let's just do the head for, for right now. So it doesn't take too long, but the process is the same. So when you're ready, you click on preview and you can also resize this so you can see it better. And you can also zoom in. So now you can see how it's working. Let's uh, zoom out and so you can see how the animation works like that. Okay, so now when you're ready, you just have to make sure again that you're in the first frame. See how it created a keyframe here? That's why it's dangerous to be up <laughs> in the middle when you're not ready. So we'll delete this keyframe because we don't want to key anything just yet and go back to the beginning. Okay, so I think we, we did a key where we moved this elephant. So let's go back and move him, move him over here. That's the key that we deleted. All right, so the good thing is that this is still applicable. 
All right. So this is our head layer. So we'll go ahead and do a quick animation. Click on record. Make sure you're in the first frame, depending on how long the uh, the length of the animation. So go ahead and start recording by clicking one time. And you see how the elephant is moving back in place. So that's why you have to keep, make sure you delete any keyframes that were introduced. OK, so and then if we rewind. And let's see. So there's a translation key for, uh, for sure. Let's go back. Go ahead. It's all right. At least you get the idea of how the animation works. OK, so that's your layer. And then at the, we can also do the trunk. Go back to the default. Please ignore the movement. <laughs> but now this is just again a quick uh, demonstration. So we go to the trunk and we'll probably do this one. Uh, let's see, try this trunk first and let's test it out. So that's the tip. We don't want that. So we need the trunk part that can bend. OK, so we'll do that one. OK, so reset and go back up here and reset and also reset as well. So quickly, let's do the trunk. This is the initial position. Actually, let's make the initial position. Let's say twist. OK, we'll make that the initial position and go back to edit. Click one time. This is the trunk and then bend and that one will go up and then go back to default and we'll do side by side do that one and this way and then go back to the default uh, then do a twist we'll do the twist maybe like down here we'll do another twist down here and then let's preview OK, so that we, as you can tell, the trunk has multiple options like this, so we can definitely use that for the different parts of it. But let's uh, record real quick. Make sure you're on the first keyframe and just press one time and then start animating. OK. And that's the that's the uh, a quick tutorial on how to use keyframe animation. You're really not keying, but you're using the puppeteer to puppeteer the the motions of the different uh, attributes of the translation, transformation, side by side twist, and all that. So with time, this is a uh, it shows you what you can do, what you can achieve given time. So you can see how I was able to do that little elephant. The baby elephant is able to pick up on that as well. So guys, I hope that was helpful. Puppeteer is a powerful, you know, animation or plugin that is in uh, Dar Studio. So please take advantage advantage of it. So don't be scared to animate in Dar Studio. It has uh, some powerful animation tools in here for animals. So when you bring when you go to Dar Studio, uh, Dar's 3D and you look at all these characters, don't feel like you will never be able to animate these characters. As long as it has a body, as long as it has uh, some exoskeleton that is built in, it will, you'll be able to animate it using the puppeteer uh, to get animations like that. So thank you so much, guys, for joining me today. And uh, see you next time with another quick insight and uh, tutorial. And whenever I come up with, uh, when I come across something that is helpful to us as uh, storytellers, as indie filmmakers, I'll do my best to share. Dare to, to dream big. Don't give up on your dream. And let's harness these, t t uh, these tools so we can tell our stories and animate cartoon characters as well. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Uh, I wish you a happy new year. Uh, see you next time. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and hit that notification bell so you are alerted when I post a new video. See you next time and bye for now. The little elephant says bye-bye. <laughs>